how to add or remove a possessable actor from the level sequence using C++ in Unreal. Possessable actors are simply actors that are currently in your level and you want to control using the level sequence. So today we're going to add them into the level sequence in the future videos we'll be able to control them. So let's get to it. So here in the header file we're going to have three functions today. One function to find the actors that are currently in the level sequence so we can find their ID and be able to identify them and remove them from the sequencer a little bit later. And then we're gonna have another function to add actors into the level sequence and a function to remove actors from the level sequence. So super simple but it's a little bit of code so I'm just gonna scroll down a little bit and we have three functions so the first function is the helper function I was talking about so the get actor UID from level sequence uh, that function is going to receive an actor the actor that you're looking for in the level sequence and also the path of the live on sequence in which you want to look for that actor so in that level sequence we're going to look for that actor and as output we're going to return the UID of the actor and the reason why it's important to find the UID of the actor it's because that's just how the sequencer works for all the objects that are in the sequence that are attached to the sequencer somehow in any way. The level sequence is really just using the FUIDs to identify all the objects that are assigned inside them. So if you're looking for an actor inside the level sequence, well, you're going to need to know its UID. That's just how it works. So here I have a nice helper function that retrieves a UID using the actor that you're looking for. So that's going to be super helpful. Good. Then we have a real function, the add actor into level sequence function. That function is going to take the actor you want to add into the level sequence as input and also the path of the level sequence you want to add the actor into. Super simple, super straightforward. As output, it's also going to return you the UID of the actor in the case that you want to do anything else with it. So for example, after adding the actor in the level sequence, maybe you want to rename it or maybe you want to add a transform track or a visibility track or anything like that, you're going to need to know its UID. So that's why I'm returning it right here. Today we're not going to use it, but later on if you want to reuse that function well you're gonna have the UID and that's gonna be awesome so good now the last function is the remove actor from level sequence that was as simple as straightforward you're just feeding it the actor you want to remove from the level sequence and the path of the level sequence from which you want to remove the actor and that function is simply going to remove the actor for you and that's it so that's it for the three functions we're gonna need today now it's time to jump in the CPP and in here we're gonna do the same thing as usual we're going to start with the includes and today we're gonna need two includes we're gonna need the level sequence because well we want to modify the level sequence so we need to include that one and we also need the movie scene because we're actually going to modify the movie scenes that are inside the level sequence we're not going to modify the level sequence well actually we're going to modify both of them at the same time eh, that's just how it works you have the level sequence and inside the level sequence you have the movie scene so we're going to modify both at the same time that's why we need those two includes and those two includes are in two different modules so we have the level sequence module and the movie scene module so we have to make sure that both those modules are inside the build.cs file and in my case I know that I don't have the movie scene module quite yet so I'm going to go at it so I'm gonna go in my build.cs file make sure that I have my level sequence module which is right here that's good my level sequence module is there and now I just have to add the movie scene module as simple as that now we just have to go back in the cpp and focus on the logic of the function so let's scroll a little bit and we're gonna start with the get actor grid from level sequence that function even though it's a helper function is going to be a pretty useful one so let's focus on that one first so to get the actor UID from a level sequence we have to first make sure that the actor is valid so that's super simple if the actor we receive as input is null, it means that, well, the actor is not valid, so I cannot find a UID for that actor because, well, I don't have the actor. So I'm just going to return right here. I'm going to say to the user, hey, I was not able to find the UID for that actor because, well, the actor is not valid. So, okay, just return a UID invalid right here. And then the second step is going to be to load the level sequence using the level path that we receive as input. So I have my level sequence path right here doing a static load object to load my level sequence. So I have my level sequence object right here. And then I'm just going to make sure that I was able to load a level sequence properly so here if my level sequence is null I'm just going to return an invalid UID once again because well I cannot find an actor inside that level sequence because well the level sequence is not valid so I cannot find anything in there there's nothing there's no level sequence so okay I'm just going to return an invalid UID right here but now that we're sure that we have a valid actor we have a valid level sequence now it's time to find the actor from the level sequence and that's uh, kind of simple we just have to look into the level sequence and do a find binding from object so we have to feed the object you're looking for so the actor right here and the context of the object in our case the context of the actor is always going to be the world of the actor that's just how it's gonna work but the reason why we have to provide the context of the object you're looking for is because the find binding from object function can be used to retrieve any type of binding you can have a component binding you can have a spawnable actor binding and in those cases the context can be completely different than the world in which the component is so for the actors it's straightforward you just have to take the world but in other cases it's going to be a little bit more complicated 
appreciated. And that's what we're gonna see in future videos. But for now, it's super simple. You just have to take the world of the actor as a context, and that just makes sense. And that should actually work. The function should be able to return us the UID of the actor, finding it inside the level sequence. And then we can simply return that it was a success at the end of function. Just before doing that, though, I'm just going to make sure that my UID is valid because, well, if the actor is not inside the level sequence, the UID right here is not going to be valid because it's not going to be able to find it because it's not there. So here I'm just going to make sure is it valid? Yes. No. If it's valid, well, it's going to be a success. Otherwise, it's not going to be a success because, well, the actor is not inside the level sequence. So, okay, that's just a little message to say to the user if I was able to find it or not. And as output, I'm going to obviously return the UID because that's what we're looking for. We're really going to use this function to retrieve the UID of the actor. So that's why we have to return it at the end, obviously. So that's it for the first helper function. Now it's time to work on the real function. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit. And it's time to see how to add an actor into a level sequence. So for that one, I'm just going to start by first checking if the actor is already in the level sequence because that's actually the behavior we want to have we don't want to be able to add the actor multiple times in the level sequence because if you don't know that's how the level sequence work you cannot add the same actor multiple times and if you do that well you can actually do that but you're gonna have weird behavior so i don't recommend doing that so in this case what i'm gonna do is checking to make sure that the actor is not already inside the level sequence before trying to add it so to do that i'm just going to retrieve the uid of my actor using the new level function that we created so get the actor uid from level sequence using the actor and the level sequence, obviously, and that's going to give us a UID. And from that UID, we're going to know if the actor is already in the level sequence or not, because, well, if the UID is valid, it means that we were able to find the UID using that actor inside that level sequence. So if it is valid, it means that the actor is already in the level sequence. So I'm not going to try to add it one more time. I'm just going to say that it was not a success. I'm not able to add the actor inside the level sequence because it's already there. But I'm also going to return the UID of the actor because I already found the UID. So why not just returning it in case you need it? So I have the UID right here. I'm just going to return it, but I'm not going to try to add the actor inside the level sequence because it's already there. But in the case that the actor is not already in the level sequence, well, we want to try to add it. So I'm just going to validate the actor to make sure that the actor we receive as input is valid because we don't want to add an invalid actor inside the level sequence. That would not make sense. So here I'm just going to check if it's null. If it's null, I'm just going to return right away, not able to add it because the actor is invalid. And then same thing for the level sequence. I'm going to load my level sequence to be able to add the actor are inside that level sequence. So take the level sequence path to do a static load object on it. And then it's going to give you the level sequence, which I'm going to validate to make sure that it is not equal to null. So if the level sequence is null, well, I cannot add any actors inside it because, well, I cannot add an actor inside something that doesn't exist. Yeah, that will not make sense. So here the level sequence is invalid. So I'm just going to return right away, not even try to add an actor inside that one. So good. Now we know that the level sequence is valid, the actor is valid, and it's not already inside the level sequence. So we can finally add the actor inside the level sequence and the way to do that is by simply casting the level sequence to a U movie scene sequence that's going to give you access to the create possessable function that function is simply going to create the actor track for you inside the level sequence and then bind the actor to that actor track that's a two-step process but in our case we can simply call one line and that's going to do both for us so create possessable uh, feeding it the actor you want to add in the level sequence and that should work it should be able to add the actor inside the level sequence and as output is going to return you the uid of the actor that that was just added inside the level sequence and that's it actually i'm just going to say that it was a success and i was able to add my actor into my level sequence as expected perfect i'm just going to also return the uid at the end because that's what we wanted to do that's it for the add actor into level sequence function now it's time to go to the last one so i'm going to scroll down a little bit and now it's time to focus on the remove actor from level sequence and in this case i'm going to do the exact same thing as i did in the previous function i'm going to check to see if the actor is already in the level sequence so i'm going to retrieve it its UID using the get actor UID from level sequence, filling in the actor and the level sequence path. And it's going to give you the UID of the actor. And then I'm going to check if the UID is valid because if the UID is not valid, it means that the actor is not in the level sequence. So I don't have to remove it because, well, it's not there. So I'm just going to return right away, right here. I don't have anything to do. The actor is not inside the level sequence. So I don't have to remove anything. But if the UID is valid, it means that the actor is inside the level sequence and we have to remove it. So here I'm going to load my level sequence once again. So uh, static load object to have access to my level sequence object that we have right here and then we can simply remove the actor from that level sequence we don't have to validate that the actor is valid or the level sequence is valid because well if the uid is valid it means that the actor is already inside the level sequence so we know that both those references are going to be valid by default so here i have my level sequence it's valid i know my actor is valid and i want to remove the actor from the level sequence and that's actually going to be in two steps because we have to first unbind the track from the actor because as I 
said before, it's creating a track inside the level sequence and then linking that track to an actor inside your level. Now we want to remove the actor from the level sequence completely. So I'm going to start by unbinding my actor from the level sequence. So unbind possessable object, feeding it the UID. That's going to remove the actor from the level sequence. So the level sequence is not going to be aware of the actor anymore. The actor is not going to be in the level sequence at all. And then we just have to delete the track. So here I'm going to get the movie scene from the level sequence. And from the movie scene, I'm going to remove the possessable, which is going to delete the track from the level sequence. So filling in the UID once again, and then that's going to delete the track for you. And as output is going to tell you if it was able to delete the track or not. So based on that result, I'm just going to return a little bit of information to the user to see if it was a success or not. And now it's time to jump in Unreal to see if it works. So in Unreal here, I have a little world in which I am right now with a little warrior inside it. I have one skeletal mesh and it is my warrior right here. And what we're going to do is add the warrior inside the level sequence, which is the level sequence that I have right here, the level sequence that I have right here. It's the same one. And we can see that it doesn't have anything in there right now. So we're going to add the warrior inside the level sequence. So using the C++ function we just created. So I'm going to go in my user interface right here. We can see that we can specify the path of the level sequence we want to use, which is the same level sequence that I just showed you. And then we have three buttons, one function to add the actor inside the level sequence, one function to get the actor from the level sequence, and one function to remove the actor from the level sequence. We're going to be able to call our three function we created today using those three buttons. I'm going to go in the graph to show you that when I click on my button to add an actor, it's going to add the actor into the level sequence. And when I get it, it's going to get the actor UID from the level sequence. And when I remove the actor, it's going to remove the actor from the level sequence. In all those cases for the actor, I'm simply going to use a get actor of class. In this case, it's going to work because I'm specifying the skeletal mesh actor class. And in my case, I just have one skeletal mesh in my level, my warrior. I don't have any other skeletal mesh in my level, otherwise it will cause some issues using the get actor of class. But in my case, I know that I only have one skeletal mesh, so that should work. And then for the level sequence path, I'm using the same level sequence path for all the different function calls. So same actor, same level sequence. I'm just going to call the different functions right here. Perfect. So let's see how it goes. I'm going to go in my content right here, run my editor utility widget, the scroll all the way at the bottom. And we're going to start by getting the actor that is currently in the level sequence. There's nothing in there. So that should not work. Get actor doesn't work. That's good. That's perfect. That's exactly what we want. Then I'm going to try to add the actor in the level sequence. Hey, it worked. My actor is now inside the level sequence. I, I can remove the actor that was already added in the level sequence. So I can add, remove, add, remove, add, remove. It seems to work. I can try to add the actor multiple times. No, I cannot add the actor multiple times because the actor is already in the level sequence. I cannot add it one more time. But now that we have the actor in the level sequence, I can get the actor because the get function now works. The actor is inside the level sequence and I can also remove the actor from the level sequence. I can obviously not remove the actor a second time if it's already removed. But you can always add, remove, add, remove, add, remove the actor from the level sequence and that should work all the time. So good, I guess that's got a bit for today's video and I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye bye.